Yasuke Kurosawa. This is a story of the only one African samurai in the Japanese story. Everybody was doing a Yasuke style. The dance for me, this is the first language. How did you find the story? How did you even want to do this? I want to talk about the mixing of uh, Afro-Japanese culture. How you got to come to Ethiopia? When I think about choreography, I think about a picture with a graphic, moving, rhythm, and space. That's why I mix uh, visual art and dance. In Africa, each color, each textile, each symbol talk about something. Good afternoon. This is your Pan African show called Africa with your host Katsalor Sefu. Today, yet again, as I always say, we come to you with another great guest. And the way I even met this person was uh, was really nice. Our Previous guest, who was Malik from Tanzania, actually took me to this event and I got to meet this amazing young man. Welcome to our studio. Could you please tell us who you are, your name, and a little bit of background and how we got to meet? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Ismail Kanute. I am a French Malian uh, choreographer, director, and also artist and I, I was born in Paris. I studied graphic design and step by step I mix visual art and dance. So you call yourself the choreographist. Graphist. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. my first question has something to do with that one so I'm glad you came <laughs> to that. So choreographic identity. You describe yourself as a choreographist. How does this hybrid identity influence your artistic process? And how do you balance the elements of choreography and graphic design in your work? For me, choreography and, and uh, visual art, this is the same. This is a question of line, rhythm, color, and also energy. When I think about choreography, I think about okay. a picture with a graphic, Graphic, moving, 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 rhythm and space, mm. shadow and light, and for me, yeah, uh, I create painting, and each scene, this is one painting. Wow! That's why I mix uh, visual art and dance. In first step, I have image, and after, I try to create in real this this painting. Brilliant! Wow! So. Just so our audience knows how I met you a week ago, actually, you came for an event. And actually, before I even say anything, you tell us how you got to come to Ethiopia. Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> even though, I, thank you for coming, but... Yeah. <laughs> I am here because I, I was invited by French embassy mm -hmm. for present a, a dance show, a dance group show called Yasuke Kurosan. And uh, Yasuke Kurosan, this is, this is a story of the only one African samurai in the Japanese story. He came from Mozambique. He was caught by, by uh, Portuguese. He, he, he was in slavery. And after, he was sold uh, to Italian Jesuit. And an Italian Jesuit uh, bring him to Japan. To Japan and they present him to one, to one um, king of war called uh, Oda Nobunaga. And Oda, Oda Nobunaga exchange him with uh, business things and he teach him the spirit of samurai, the Bushido. Mm. And this guy became the private samurai of this emperor of war. Wow. So you said he is Mozambique. Now, other people say he's Ethiopian. Other yeah. people say he's Nigerian. Yeah. So how do we know where is he from? Is it possible to really identify? I mean, it's nice to just say an African samurai. Yeah. You know, it doesn't yeah. make, it makes all of us proud. Yeah, there is few writing of uh, Italian Jesuit and uh, Japanese monk okay. call about the region of Congo, Mozambique. Okay, so it's... Yeah. We'll just say Africa. 
Yeah, but for <laughs> me, yeah, but for me, he's an an African warrior. Yeah. So with this African warrior, your group decided to make or to create something. You know, when, when I first met you and when I, when I asked you, how did you find the story? How did you even want to do this? You know, you, you told me about the animation story and how you loved animation and how you got into it. Because you also did a documentary on this, yeah. right? Yeah. So can we go back and you tell us a little bit about that too? Because it's, it's really fascinating because this was back in the 1500s, right? Yeah. So it's a long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 13, 4, 14 mm. years ago. I discovered the story by the Japanese animation called Afro Samurai. Okay. And the voice of the hero was the voice of Samuel L. Jackson. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, after watching this, I found in the uh, internet, yeah. yeah, I wrote Afro Samurai and I discovered the story of Yasuke Kurosan. And uh, three years ago or four years ago, um, there was a Japanese cultural year in France. There is many things, exhibition, concert, um, many performance. And I remember of this story. And I decided to work one year for prepare this travel in Japan for shooting a dance short film about uh, Yasuke Kurosan's story and also collaborate with Japanese dancer and also Afro-Japanese artist and dancer. Wow. Because I want to talk about the mixing of uh, Afro-Japanese culture now in this time. Yeah. And I met Senegalese, Japanese, Cameroonese, Japanese, Malian, Japanese, Afro-American, Japanese. And, uh, wow. and for me, they are this modern African samurai because they have the mixed roots exactly. and, and they create new imagination with, we, with them uh, roots. That's why I decided to talk about this symbol, mm. Yasuke Kurosan, but also talk about the mixed people, mm. Afro Asian people. Because we, we, don't we don't talk, talk about, about it. it. We, we don't talk about it. We don't, because we don't. we don't see a lot of them. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things. Yeah. But there are quite a, lo a lot of uh, Asian, Afro mixed. Yeah, and, and we call them black and Asian. Blazian. Uh, Blazian, yeah. Blazian. Black and Asian uh, people. <laughs> and that's why, yeah, I decide uh, after the short film, I went back to France and, and I decided to collaborate with Mix people, okay. Afro-European and Afro-Asian uh, dancer. So you're really trying to teach us that there are these people out there also, not only about the samurai, not but that only. was the beginning, that yeah. was the... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was interesting, because the first night we saw you was a fashion show. Yeah. The fashion show, wow. So you have to tell us about the designer, because <laughs> it was amazing. I am very proud to collaborate with uh, this uh, fashion designer called Holy Butt. Holy Butt. In, in Wolof, a Senegalese uh, language, it's called Shining Thing. Okay. It's like when, when you saw something pass, it's shining. Okay. And and this fashion designer, his uh, real name is Lamine Koyate. Okay. He is based in Paris, but he's Malian. And for me, this is one of the best fashion designers of the world. He infused mm. Japanese and African culture. Yeah. It was really, really one of the best fashion shows I've seen. And the reason why I, I say that was because it wasn't in your traditional sense of fashion show, mm. but it was also part of a dance. Yeah. And you also had Ethiopian dancers. Yeah. Tell us about that experience. How was that experience with our Ethiopian dancers? 
It was really exciting because mm. uh, when I present this performance, I, I collaborate with a local dancer. And each time, this is a unique fashion show. And each time we collaborate with local dancer and a local musician. So the fashion is different. Every time it's different. And I was very happy to see the real uh, Ethiopian dance mm. with the shoulder, with the neck. It was crazy. <laughs> and we had uh, Ethiopian dance in, in this show. And yeah, everybody was doing Eskasta. You were yeah. all like yeah. moving. Yeah. <laughs> we were like, when did they learn Eskasta? <laughs> we learned uh, in, in two but, hours. But, it's in <laughs> yeah. you, but that's the beauty of it, you know? Yeah. The goal of this fashion show is talk about us. Thank you. talk during one hour, yeah. just feel free. And we mix African, Asian, European. Uh, yeah, we, we talk about um, many layers. layers yeah. And uh, each person has his place and he can exchange or not. Mm -hmm. He has a choice. Exactly. <laughs> and it's very magic. It truly was. <laughs> works investigates the impact of colonialism, the persistence of ancestral rights. How do you approach these complex themes in your projects and what messages do you hope to convey through your art? Colonialism is a very big subject. 
Yeah, the, yeah, yeah the and big it's one. very yeah. exactly yeah. very interesting how you would convey that in dance. Uh, it's a big subject because uh, the colonialism destroyed many things, mm. destroyed many stories, destroyed many kingdom and culture. So to find story, we have to rebuild story and culture, and in same time we have to create our own identity. We have to do the both in the same time. That's why this is, this is uh, difficult. But for make this, we have to create a bridge between culture. Because for knowing who we are, we have to know the other. Absolutely. Because the other can teach us and, and also can create talking, reflection about who we are. And the message through the dance that the dance, for me, this is the first language, before the voice. Yeah. So with the body, we can talk in the same time with the visible and invisible world. Uh. And for such uh, new information, we have to go to the invisible world. <laughs> so one of the key uh, of the invisible world, this is the dance. Mm. This is the energy. And this key can create many doors where we can talk, Absolutely. when we call chatting, when, where we can exchange, where we can live, mm -hmm. and where we can rebuild, bridge, and also unify exactly. people in present moment. Language is a barrier sometimes. Yeah, right? I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I am also stutter mm. man. You do? You're not stuttering now? Yeah. So but this helped you, is what you're trying to tell me. Yeah, that's why I develop the dance ah. and uh, visual art. Yeah. You've always stuttered when you were young. Yeah, always. And for me, it was hard to, to express, talk. Yeah. to talk, to, to say something. I know. But when I begin to dance, the people listened. Listened to me. <laughs> so. It was better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who needs to talk <laughs> when there's dance? Yeah. So cross-disciplinary approach, because you do that a lot. And obviously, since you're trying to unify people, culture, and so many other things, your work seamlessly integrates various disciplines such as textile, yeah. serigraphy, tech, and dance. Can you elaborate on your creative process and how you manage to weave these diverse elements together? Because okay. usually it's dance <laughs> yeah, and yeah, music. Yeah, yeah. Now you've taken it to a whole other level. <laughs> yeah, when I want to talk about one subject, I think we need several disciplines to talk about this. Mm -hmm. To talk about with one di discipline is not enough. True. So many times I begin with a, a short film. Okay. Textiles, stereography, choreography, images. And when I, when I finish the, sh the dance short film, I begin to think about the following of, of, this, of this discussion on stage. Mm -hmm. And of stage, music, dance, shadow and light and visual art also. And uh, after, if it's not enough, yeah, I, I go to the contemporary art to make installation or performance like uh, yesterday work you, you saw. Okay. Because for me, one, the subject is like uh, a diamond. Mm. There is many faces. So that's why I, I use several disciplines. <laughs> <laughs> and we can cut, you can continue yeah. to cut, 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 That's cut, 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 cut,
we talk about the Afro Ninpo series. You blend motives from different cultures. What inspired the series and what do you hope audiences take away from cultural resonances you explore? Mm -hmm.